What's up guys, it's Adam. We're back with another MMA breakdown. Today we're going to talk about the first two pay-per-views, but the first three title fights in 2022. Happy New Year, let's do it. Starting off the year, we've got UFC 270, Ngannou versus Garn. Co-main event is at flyweight, the world title on the line, with Moreno and Figueredo fighting for the third time in... I think about 12 months, I don't know when that first one was. It's it's a it's a held up division. It reminds me of Frankie and Grey made it that year. They had that draw and it was like the New Year's Day show. It just went on for so long, you know, so long. And the whole lightweight division was stuffed up. We had like Jim Miller, George Sotoropoulos at the time, like just these guys on eight, nine, 10 fight win streaks that couldn't get into the flyweight title shot. And now we're gonna settle it. Moreno, Figueredo, and Ngannou versus Garn. Now, we'll start with the co-main, Moreno, Figueredo. It's the last chance for Figueredo to get a title shot at this weight. He struggles to make flyweight. If he loses again, if he loses to Moreno again, you gotta, you gotta be going to bantamweight. He's, a, he's a powerful dude. He could, he could fight bantamweight. Him and maybe him and Cody, but Figueredo has to move away from the title shot. One of them was defense, second one was defense, but he lost. Third one, if you lose, you know, two out of the three, you're out of there. You need to move on. He really needs to pick this up. He needs to starch Moreno, like, quick. Moreno's so defensively good, so sharp, so fast, how all those flyweights are. Frigoretto needs to get in there, put the pressure on him straight away. Moreno's pressure, though, his advantage is that cardio, that, that young spirit. You know, there's a, there's a theory in martial arts where... The better you get at your skills, the less risk you take. And Moreno isn't there yet. I'm not saying he isn't skillful. I'm saying he is so young and is willing to take those risks. Think early John Jones. Spinning elbows and back kicks and all this other stuff. Now he's doing like these simple combos, chopping people's legs up, wrestling them. It's a lot less risky. GSP, early GSP compared to late GSP. A lot more risk taking when you're younger because you don't have that experience making you question your decisions. It's all on instinct. It's moving fast, it's that instinct. And Moreno has so much of that. And that's what makes him such an exciting champion. He's a fun dude, he you know, has all those pop vinyls and stuff. I think Moreno takes this one, but Figueredo can get there with pressure and using his physicality early, early in the fight. Let's go to the main event, Ngannou and Garn. Man, whew. it's a big, big fight in a lot of ways. For the first time in a long time, a champion is fighting out their contract in a title fight. So you've got Francis Ngannou on the last fight of his deal, as Dana told Brett Okamoto during the week on ESPN. Francis is fighting the last fight of his contract in a heavyweight title defense against who I believe is the most skillful heavyweight right now. Cyril Garn is a scary dude. Big, I think he's like 6'5", strong. He's heavy as well. He's not a light. Heavyweight in that regard is not like a uh, a Stipe who's I think I think Stipe weighs at like 230 I think Cain Velasquez was about 230 as well Cyril's a big guy. I think he's like 245 250 He's tall and he uses the length better than Francis. That's going to be the key to victory for Cyril Garn Cyril Garn's key to victory is head movement obviously against Francis Demolition after demolition. I mean that uppercut gives me nightmares still Cyril Garn needs to move his head and needs to kick Francis. He needs to kick him in the body and in the legs with caution to not be swung on with a big overhand right. Francis doesn't kick that much. He's a big, strong guy, but he can't kick as well as Cyril can. That's the advantage. Cyril needs to kick him a lot in the legs and body. And then as Francis starts to defend, kick the face and he that'll open up his hands for more striking as well. Cyril opens with kicks, uses head movement. The fitness will be the big test. We've seen Francis against his, in his fight against Derek Lewis. He really, really gassed out. Just absolutely trashed it. That was a trash fight, actually. This is a whole trash fight in Garnu versus Derek Lewis back in the day. Cyril needs to use his fitness. In Garnu, I'm assuming you know, he's better than he was, but it's always hard to tell when they fight for like four minutes. I think his average fight time in the UFC is like six minutes. Like it's, not, it's barely over one round, you know? Cyril needs to use his fitness and his match fitness to drag Ngannou in, out of those dangerous first two rounds and into round three, four, five 
the longer the fight goes on, the more it favors Garn, especially if he opens with the leg kicks that I spoke about a minute ago. The big story in this fight is the contract. Now, in the UFC, if Francis fights out his contract, he owes them one more fight if he's still the champion. If he loses, he's gone. It's time to renegotiate. He can go somewhere else. I think Ngannou goes to heavyweight boxing, to be honest. I think he goes and makes that money. He's a massive dude. It's not like he's a superstar wrestler or anything. It's not like he's, uh, his MMA success has come from his mixed martial arts skills. It's from his hands. He's blowing people away with those hands. Those punches are so strong. I mean, oh, digging up that sand and the story of him getting out of uh, Cameroon, I think he's from. Francis, if I was him, he loses the fight. I'm going straight to boxing. I'm making that money. I am making that money straight away. You've already been the world champion. What else do you need? You've beaten, you've knocked out like eight legends. You need to move on, do something else. If he wins, it's interesting because there's... The next person in line would, would be Lewis, and we don't really want to see that fight again. Or John Jones, and it has to be a lot of money. But John hasn't fought a heavyweight yet. That's another podcast, that's another episode, all in of itself. Just talking about upcoming Ngannou versus Jones. I think if Cyril wins, Ngannou is gone, and they, him and Jones fight, because that's a good star matchup for John. And I think the UFC wants John to be the champion. At the end of the day. If Nganu wins, it's still Nganu versus John as the next fight because Lewis, it doesn't really, it, it's not as enticing and John Jones hasn't fought for two years. I mean, he has to fight a heavyweight eventually if he's going to do it. Nganu versus Jones would be a massive pay-per-view and Cyril could fight someone else, I guess, after that. It doesn't really matter. Who, who knows what will happen with that? He could fight someone like, um, like Tai Tuivasa or someone, you know, someone in the top. Five, six, ten. That's 270, man. In Garnu versus Garn, and before that, you've got, you've got the biggest guys and the smallest guys. Moreno Figueredo at flyweight, in Garnu versus Garn at heavyweight. Moving on to early Feb, UFC 271, Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whitaker at middleweight for the world title again. Um, this is a really interesting one because Whitaker wasn't looking great. In the lead up, and he had all those health issues, he had family issues, and I actually went live to the event where Whitaker was supposed to fight Kelvin Gastelum. You know, that morning we found out that Israel was going to fight Anderson Silver in the main event instead of the co-main, and I was I was super proud, and that was one of the best best live events I've ever been to watching that fight, Israel versus Anderson Silver. Just for myself as a striker myself, it was just a huge treat to get to watch Israel versus Anderson in that fight and play a small part in the camp in the lead up. Israel versus Rob Whitaker, two. Now, here are the keys to victory for Whitaker. Big moments like this, it seemed like at Marvel Stadium, the last time they fought, the big moment got to him. Israel's spoken about this before, you know, the beating the chest and getting really pumped up. Those big moments, and it's like he hadn't had big moments before, you know, against Yoel twice, Jacques Array. Rob Whitaker needs to live up to the moment and be in his right mental headspace if he wants to win the title back. Key to victory for Israel, making sure he's doing something new. There is so, at the start, when Israel first got into UFC, there wasn't much footage of his MMA fights. There was a lot of footage of kickboxing, obviously, you know, 70-odd 70, 70 professional fights, loads of kickboxing fights, but that's not the same. It's helpful, but it's not the same. Now there's, you know, another 10, 15 UFC fights, however many fights he's had now in the last four or five years. There's loads of fights, and they're not just of him um, rolling through dudes, you know, they're not, it's not him fighting um, Melvin Gillard in Australia, he absolutely rolled through Melvin. That's not helpful footage for an opponent to watch because you're only seeing him, make no mistakes, you're seeing him just smash through dudes and just, just like run right over him, you know. Israel, he needs to bring something new because there's so much footage already now and there's so much to learn from what he's done i mean luke thomas has broken down his style so many times and such a, did such a good job doing that the stance changes is whitaker's key to victory israel's changes stances quite a bit and if he changes stances too much 
uh, Whitaker should take advantage of that. He needs to take advantage during the stance change. Now, when you're changing stance with someone, there is only a few moments where you have an advantage. If your feet are, let's say, left in front of right, as we lift our body weight a little bit, just a little bit, to start changing stance in this moment, after the weight is up to the stance, and I'm talking about small amount of, not even one second, as the weight resettles is the time to strike. You need to strike during the stance change, not after it when he's reset already, it's too late. He's already changed stances, it's finished. The opportunity is gone. Rob needs to take advantage of Israel's stance changes to maybe shoot for takedowns and get on top. Jan Vukovic gave us the game plan to beat Izzy, and that's wrestling and on top. Now, I'm not saying Izzy can't wrestle, I'm not saying that he can't, but Rob's a different animal. He qualified for the Commonwealth Games here in Australia for wrestling. He probably could have gone to the Olympics for wrestling if he wasn't in the UFC, to be honest. Rob's a great wrestler. He needs to take Izzy down and hold him until he has enough on the judges' scorecards to win. Because I don't, don't believe, even with Rob in the great condition he's been in the last couple of fights, has what it takes to outstrike Izzy on the feet. And I don't think anyone at middleweight does. Jan got there because he was bigger, so the impacts that well the impacts made more of an impact. So in that fight, Izzy was getting hit a lot, but where he could maybe take a bit of a jab, he couldn't take the jab, he couldn't take the pushing around, the, the risk of the takedown was was there too, especially in round four and five against Jan. Israel needs to be cautious of doing new things, and I know he's training with Carl Van Roon right now, doing some ITF style Taekwondo training flowing, making sure his movement's really there. Whitaker has that classic punch-punch, high-kick combo, and besides that, Israel's gonna pick him apart on the feet. He's gonna eat him absolutely alive. There's no chance, there is no chance Whitaker outstrikes Adesanya, and if he KOs him now that I've said that, I will pour a bucket of water on my head. I mean, I, I, could, I can't even imagine that happening. Israel, do something new. Rob Whitaker, take advantage of the stance changes and be mentally ready for the big moment. Now, those are the first three title fights. My picks, we'll go back to 270. I, I, I'm picking Moreno. <sighs> Heavy work. Moreno to beat Figueredo. I think Moreno's going to take that one out. Ngannou versus Garn, my pick. Man, it's very hard to pick against Francis, isn't it? I'm going to pick Cyril because I think he's smart enough to not get KO'd straight away. And not that, you know, Stipe or anything weren't. But I think Cyril takes it because of the versatility of striking versus Ngannou. 271, I'm a big Adesanya fanboy. I, I think Israel takes it out, but I think it's a lot closer than the first fight. I think it's a lot closer than the first fight this time, but I think Israel either TKO's him within three rounds or he wins it, a close, a close but unanimous decision. Those are my picks. Moreno, Garn, Adesanya, ah, Adesanya, Jesus. UFC, first part of 2022, three title fights to kick us off, guys. Now, if you're liking the content, if you're loving the MMA chat, please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. I'm really going all out on YouTube in 2022. There'll be heaps of um, MMA tutorials. I'm going to Abu Dhabi in January to fight at the IMAF Amateur World Championships. So I'm very excited to share that journey with you guys in preparation for the world title tournament. Please like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Let me know who you think is going to take out the three first title fights of 2022. Have a good new year and I'll see you in